Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Tryon, and the making continues here at Homemade. I am free motion quilting right now, and I'm using my regular sewing machine. I'm actually using the Janome 6650, and I have kind of turned it into a little long arm by putting it on my cutie frame. And if you haven't seen this before, come pay attention to this because this is going to be a little mind blowing. If you've always wanted a long arm or maybe you have uh, rented one before at your local quilt shop, or maybe you've even sent your quilt to us to get long armed. Maybe you free motion on your tiny little machine and you're frustrated by it, but you love the idea of finishing your quilts or your projects yourself. This allows you, this frame here allows you to essentially just use your regular machine, turn it sideways, lower the feed dogs, and then you can be free motioning yourself. I'm just doing a little, you know, meander here, but you could do patterns, you can do pantograms, you can do, you know, some chalk dusting with some stencils. And it essentially allows you to use your regular sewing machine in this whole new way. And so you can see, I'm just kind of making my way across this section of fabric. And I've rolled up the ends of my quilt and just attached them right to the frame here. And I thought I would bring you this today because it was one of those products when I first learned about it. You know how you sometimes have like a moment? This was one of them. Because, you know, if you've tried free motion quilting on your own on your machine, maybe you've got the gloves and the slippery mat for underneath and you're still not totally loving how it turns out after you've spent all this time piecing it. Uh, you want to finish it yourself. Sometimes people feel like it's cheating if they're sending it off to the long armor. I don't blame them. Um, and you want to do it yourself. This is a really easy way. Uh, it's a four foot frame. So you do need a four foot table, but it crunches right down. You can fit it under the bed. It's called the cutie frame and it's from the Grace Company. And we've got it as a special for you today. And it's regular $16.49. That's what we normally have it in the shop for. Uh, it's on Black Friday sale for, uh, normally if we were to put it on sale, we'd put it on sale for $11.49. But we've got it Black Friday for $9.99.99. Plus, you take another 10% off any machine, iron, or frames today. Um, so we're just piling it up. Um, and here to help us learn a little bit more about the cutie frame is Jared Cahoon from the Grace Company. He's joining Hi us there. live from my dear. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks so much for inviting me again. I have, uh, I've done this with you once before in studio with you and it was a blast. So I appreciate yeah. you inviting me back. Yeah, well, last time it was great to have you here in person, but I love technology for this exact reason, because you didn't need to get on a flight to come here to take a look at my free motion quilting. You, you've got yours where you are. I've got mine yep. where I am. And tell me a little bit about the cutie. I kind of gave it a little run up. Um, I'm going to continue sewing here. Maybe you can give me your little spiel. And then I want to tell you, I've got something I really do want to work on. So I'm going to take off okay. the blank canvas in a minute and okay. I'm going to load up Amanda in the shop. This is her very favorite thing we got in for Christmas. It's these panels. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, it's so cute. Amanda's ah. always saying, eat my snow dust. I'm going to just try to show you <laughs> in, the, um, in the overhead. Eat my snow dust. It has all these cute little Santa um, pictures. And I love practicing free motioning on a panel, something that you don't have to uh, piece. It's easy to put together. And you've got all these little parts that you can practice on. So once I do a little bit more on here, then I'm gonna show you how I load this up mm -hmm. and we're gonna do some free motioning for real so Amanda can get her panel downstairs. She loves it. So Jared, what do you love about the cutie frame? What should we know? 
So uh, a lot of the same things you mentioned, uh, it is just a tabletop frame. So you don't have to dedicate a room or part of a room in your house. Uh, you can set it up when you need it and put it away when you don't. Uh, it also lets you do any size of project. Uh, I know that uh, often salespeople will show it just with a little piece of fabric, but if you've got a great big piece of fabric, it hangs over the edge and you can do great big quilts. It, there is some back and forth. There is some moving the fabric this way and that. Uh, it is just held on with some clips. So I can show you a little bit on mine while you're busy over there, uh, that I've got these plastic clips. They're a polycarbide, so they're super tough. Uh, they don't break. Uh, and the fabric is already sandwiched and we just lay it over top and we clip it down and then we're ready to quilt. Uh, we don't have to do a whole lot else uh, to get ready. Uh, I do. And I recognize that machine. Up. I recognize that machine that you've got on your frame. I've got the Janome uh, 6650. What do you have on yours? Uh, this is the Janome 1600. Nice. And this so is just a, straight, a nice, yeah, straight, straight stitch, stitch machine. Uh, it, uh, it's got a nine inch throat, uh, which is pretty typical. Like throat sizes for machines have gotten bigger and bigger over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and so nine inches is very typical. There's a lot of machines that have a nine or larger. And yeah. so you, you can make great big quilts, little quilts. A, a lot of people, I, I always talk, say, oh, you can make big quilts with it. And then they ask, well, can I make small quilts? And I oh, sure you can. <laughs> uh, just make sure you've got uh, enough batting, uh, sorry, enough backing to reach across the frame. Yeah. Uh, and then you can do coasters if you want. You can do little earrings, whatever you For want. Sure. And so if you were doing something very small, like just some placemats or a, a dog mat or something that didn't reach across, yeah, just make sure you've got a little extra piece, but your, your little you know, fabric on top, you're just going to trim down anyway. So you can use any size on this. Just make sure you can tighten, um, get your, your clamps under that fabric because you want to have it sort of nice and taunt like this. Like, listen, kind of makes like a bit of a drumming sound. So you've got a, a nice um, flat, tight surface. The other thing I'll tell you is I didn't use any basting spray. Um, uh -huh. Do you use basting spray when you're doing it? Um, actually, yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it's nice. It's easy. Um, on the bigger grace frames, uh, lots of them are roller frames. So there's no basting needed as the, the three layers kind of laminate together as, yeah. as you advance the fabric. Uh, but I've, I often don't want my stuff to shift around too much. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. You can use some basting spray. However you normally would baste it is how I would baste it. Um, so that's usually the way I go. I'm a little different from you though. You say you want the fabric to be really quite quite taut. Uh, and I go for quite a bit looser fabric. I want to see, right? uh huh. I want to see the machine moving the fabric just a little bit as it's, as it's traveling underneath. Okay. Uh, the, the challenge is, is you can actually make the fabric really tight. And then when you put your stitches in and take it off the frame, it puckers. And oh, I'd rather okay. have the fabric a little loose than have it too tight and have that puckering experience. The same thing when you've got, uh, I've got the, the bungee clamps on the sides holding my fabric in place. You can get those really tight. Uh, and then when, after you've done stitching it, it can look really terrible. So uh, make sure it's flat and even, uh, less tight and or taut and more flat and even is the approach I take. Okay, these are great tips. Um, so like I mentioned before, if you're wondering, I know I see a couple people in the comments loving it. Thank you so much. Um, normally if we put this on sale, it goes on sale for $11.49. It's regular $16.49. Uh, we've got it on Black Friday special today for $9.99. That's and a good Jared, price. you told me that you wanted to say something about this. Well, one, that is an amazing price. I love that. It's under a thousand bucks. Ah, I wish I could buy one. And another 10% off because we've got 10% no. off any machines, any irons, or any <laughs> any of the cutie frames today. Yeah. Well, and and because I, I think that's really cool, but I think we can make that a little better. So uh, you've got it set up on your frame, and I just have one yeah. in the box. This is a Gracie laser. Laser, uh, yes. And that will be included for free. No and way. The cutie channel locks, which is just a kind of a, it's a brown box. Come uh, on. 
Uh, okay, but it so locks the different directions of travel. So you can lock it so it doesn't move side to side or it doesn't move forward and backward. And that will also be free. So you get both of them with the frame. Wow. Both of them with the frame for free wow. at $9.99 okay. uh, 99 plus, plus 10% yeah. off. And the free channel locks and the free. Okay. So in case that's amazing. Thank you, Jared, for offering that to the people who are tuning into to homemade. Thank you. That's very generous of you guys to add the, the channel locks and the lasers. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, just in case you're wondering what's a channel lock. If you ever wanted to do straight line quilting, it's going to lock the wheels. So all you have to do is drag it across. Da, 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 and it's not going to go forward or back. Or if you wanted to go this way, it's going to prevent it from coming sideways. So you get straight lines. So you lock that channel and bring it all the way across what you're doing. You can bring it mm -hmm. down on the batting and then bring it all the way back over because it's going to be locked in place. That's amazing. And then the laser, I've got a laser here on the side of my frame. And if you were to, let's say, take a print out like a pantograph of a design. So I've got one printed out here. And what you would do is you can change the handles um, to back handles on uh, the cutie. And mm -hmm. all they do is they unscrew like this. So I'm going to do it and show you how easy. So they just pull right out like that. And then I'll just walk around to the other side here and you can put them directly into the back of your machine. You don't have to use it this way, but it makes it nice and easy to see what's going on here. Ignore my cord. And then the laser just clips right onto your machine and you turn it on. And then let me just get these into place here. So I'm just securing the, the handlebars. And then all you do is follow the design with the little laser. Now it's the laser light is sort of right. I'm going to try to point it out so that you guys can see it on TV a little bit easier. Uh, is it, do you see the little laser light there? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And so you just screw this into place. I can't believe you're giving everybody one of these. That's amazing. Thank you, Jared. Um, so then I'm just going to follow that pattern. And then what ends up happening is, it get that pattern then gets stitched into the front of your project. And then it's much more reminiscent of an edge to edge quilt design. Um, and you're not maybe just left to your own devices and just meandering the way you might if um, you were just free motioning on your own, because it's much easier to follow a pattern if you're not you know great at drawing or, or something like that. So that's yeah. very cool. That's very cool that you're including those. That's very cool. There, I, I really like uh, the laser stylus because it lets you do, it lets you get a very interest, a very repeatable, very consistent design because you have something consistent to follow without having to take the you know, hundreds of hours to master a new quilting design uh, and all the the time and work that that is. Uh, so you can still get beautiful designs. They look great. Uh, if you've ever been to a quilt show, you can usually look. That's that's my favorite thing. I came to quilting from quilting, not from piecing. So I <laughs> wish I could go to the quilt show and they turn all the quilts around so I can see the quilting on the back. That's right. Uh, but I love seeing the beautiful pa uh, pantographs people use because uh, you get that consistent repeat. Um, and it, But it still has your personal touch because you're yeah. never perfect. Uh, and that's the important thing to remember for me when I do paper pant uh, do a paper pantograph is don't stress. No one sees the paper. They only see the quilt. True. So if you're off the line a little bit, just, just go with it. It'll be fine. Exactly. Exactly. So when you can see the little laser dot in case you're just tuning in, um, we can kind of let's, let's, yeah, we'll give them a full shot. You can see the little laser dot, right? See it on my finger there. And so this is an example of a paper pantograph. And I just move the whole frame, like the, the track, and just follow that right along. And even if I'm right, if I'm a little off, it doesn't really matter because no one sees the outline anyway. They're just gonna notice that there's this drawing on your quilt because it's gonna be putting it in stitches. So the laser is very cool. You leave it 
um, attached to your frame and you just turn it on and off just like that. It has a little uh, battery inside and off it goes. Um, I While you were talking there, Jared, I took my test um, sandwich quilt off the frame because I think it's kind of important for people to see how easy it is to load the frame because sometimes yeah. they go, okay, well, how's this going to work? How am I going to, can I do a king size? Can I do a little coaster? Mm -hmm. What will fit? You know what I mean? So I thought I would just show people right from the beginning, I was going to do this panel. If you weren't tuning in at the top of the uh, hour here, um, I said, this is Amanda's favorite thing that we're carrying in the shop this Christmas is the Santa panel. She loves this thing. She's all over it. And it's it's true. It's so cute. And it comes together so easy. You could put some borders around it, or you could have it just as a little throw, whatever you like. But I thought, okay, I'll load it up. Um, and I was thinking of quilting it with Invisifil. And have you ever used Invisifil, Jared? Have you heard of this? I, I, I like okay. Invis Invis um, uh, Phil has a clue in the name of what it does, but no, That's I've right. never used kind of an invisible thread. Uh, I'll, I've got some in my project thread. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like collecting interesting or uncommon quilting threads and seeing, seeing how good they are, seeing if they work. Yeah, same. So Invisifil is a 100 weight thread, and I'm not sure if we can see on the uh, overhead or not. It's very, very thin. It's 100 yeah. weight and very, very strong. It's like quilting with a piece of your hair. And so where invisible thread is kind of plasticky and not like in kind of springy, this is still real polyester thread okay. um, made by Wonderfell. Anyway, I'm going to put it in here because it's perfect for when you want to see the stitching or the lines, but not necessarily your thread color. Because okay. it's so thin, um, it, where's my snips? Because it's so thin, it sort of adopts the hue of whatever fabric is underneath it. And then that way, if you've got a bunch of different colors on whatever you're doing, you don't have any one color of thread stamping through all the other colors. So I've oh, just threaded cool. my machine like normal because when you're using the cutie frame, you're using your regular machine. You're just turning it this mm -hmm. way. So that's very cool. And now I'm going to just take my entire sandwich here and you can see I did leave. Jared, what, what do you suggest in terms of dimensions along the outside of what you're doing? Uh, I usually I recommend four, four to six inches. Okay, four to six inches. Um, I've got a little bit more um, on the sides because I just put a whole um, width of fabric on the back. Yep. Um, and that's just basically so it's giving me a nice um, flat surface to quilt on. And when I'm starting, you can leave it so that just your backing and your batting are getting mm -hmm. kind of hooped up. Do you call it hooped up or... How do you, what do you say that? What's the, Ooh. What do uh, I'd, I'd what use, I'd use hooped or uh, zoned. Oh, zoned. I see. That's fancy. I've never heard that. Uh, um, when we move to quilting with automation, uh, it's called zone quilting. You zone by zone quilt. Ah, uh, uh, yes. But, that I've heard. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we are going to do, well, let's, maybe we should pick our zone and then we would know. Good call. Good call, Jared. Good thing you're here. Maybe we'll start with the tree then, because the middle, I, I always want to start with like the most fun thing. And mm -hmm. I feel like the tree is really cool. So I'm going to move this up so that we've got some of the tree in my zone. Good yeah. call. And then, and, uh, I, yeah. I usually plan where I want to quilt before I clip it together. Okay. Uh, once you clip it in, then you're you're kind of de you've decided where the machine's going to reach. Uh, so I usually will will do exactly what you're doing. Trace over, see is it going to reach all the spaces I want to quilt? Um, exactly. And if it won't, because uh, that tree is quite a tall tree, if you're trying to quilt the background, uh, you could yeah. always turn the quilt sideways uh, and then Ooh. quilt half the tree at a time, and then come back and and move the quilt to quilt the other half. That's a great idea. Let's do it. Because then 
we are going to be able to get this zone much more in line with the space we have available. And you know, sometimes when people come in the shop and they get to try out the cutie frame, they that's one of the questions that they ask is, well, how do I move from place to place? Turning this around is the perfect idea for the shape of that zone. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing a size that is bigger than the than the frame, you just, you know, when you're done that zone, so to speak, you just kind of move it over and roll it back up again. And I'll show you here just how easy it kind of goes on the frame. Because if it was too hard, to be quite honest, I wouldn't be able to do it live <laughs> if it was that hard, you know? So you can see I've got all this sort of left over here. And so the frame is equipped with these little bungee cables in behind. So you can see all you got to do is roll. And then it keeps it nice and neat. And then find the cable. There's one. And it just clips. And there's another one. And it just clips. And there's some little things to keep the cords out of the way. Uh, well, it's also to help keep those cords up. Uh, you, you have them hanging down a little. Uh, I usually, uh, I usually will double them so that the double tail, them, okay. I can see the tail up above. Otherwise okay. that tail could come underneath and get sewn into your project. Oh God. Uh, so usually I like seeing that tail on my, uh, oh. so like this, right? Yep. A lot more Got like it. that. Cause that would, that, uh, that helps us, uh, avoid sewing it in. Which is a bad yeah, day because you gotta rip true. the stitches out and ugh. yeah, that that is true. And I will tell you that did happen downstairs. We did so in one time. <laughs> but yep, you know, I've done it too. Yep. Um, so that is a good tip to keep those tails out of harm's way. So just yep. loop them up and out of yep. out of particularly on the back. On the front, meh. They they they're not as likely to get pulled underneath. You'll see me. I'm switching this around. Um, have I got the front ones on the back here? Yeah. Does it really matter? Nope. I guess. Okay. Uh, but the clips well, they have uh, they have this sort of shape to them, uh, where the this is where the bar goes inside of inside the this corrugated space. But there's also a channel on each one of them, and that channel is so that the clips that she's using uh, can latch on somewhere. If they weren't there, they wouldn't have any to, anywhere to latch on to. Yes, exactly. And that's how you know they're facing the right direction is when the little clip can fit in them there. Okay, so even though um, these ones are supposed to be on the front and these ones are supposed to be on the back. It, it doesn't matter that much. The, the difference between... I'll show you guys. Yeah. So this is the, the side and the front have this sort of a look. They're corrugated. Okay. Uh, and what that lets you do is you lets you clip onto the rail and then turn it to tighten the fabric. Oh, the I, back I didn't know ones, about the tightening. The back ones have this kind of they're weird flatter. shape. It's kind of a yeah. square, but they're all smooth. And uh -huh. the idea is that these clip on and they stay that way. Uh, there's no way to tighten them. They just they don't roll with the uh, across to tighten the fabric. They just kind of sit. Um, so. If you put your fabric on, uh, like you can put them on however you want, like it's your stuff, but yep. uh, you can't put them on. So these ones go on the back and they stay still. Uh, and then the ones in the front uh, that you can roll them forward uh, and that will tighten the fabric. And you can get the fabric nice and tight. And I'm just giving it a little roll because you had suggested having it a little bit looser maybe than I had it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so too loose. Can you tell just by looking a little tighter? Uh, but, oh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a spectrum. It's a range. So okay. uh, as long as it's not too tight, uh, yep. then you're, then you're doing all right. Uh, I usually challenge people to try having their fabric just a little bit looser than they normally do. Okay. Uh, you don't need to go to full slack, uh, but think about you, the fabric and what you, where it's going to go. If it's going Got on a it. bed, it's mostly just kind of flat and even. Uh, so you can make the fabric that way. How did your uh, your zoning go? I can see a, a nice, beautiful strip. Yeah, I've got a nice uh, like landing strip here. 
And I'm going to just needle down right in the point of the star at the top. So I'm just going to needle down right there. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my time and I'm going to just outline the tree. Yep. And I'm not going to worry too much if I'm not totally perfect. So I'm needle down. I'm going to bring that bottom thread up. And I know it's hard to see right under the needle, but the bottom thread just came up. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm starting with the needle down, giving it a couple stitches in place. And then I am going to stop because I left the handlebars on the back. <laughs> and I'm going to bring them back to the front. <laughs> I was just yeah. moving the machine. The machine moves so easily on the track that you can literally just move the machine um, without even touching the handlebars. But it also reminds me that I didn't roll up the front either. So if you had a big king size or even more, mm -hmm. again, just rolling it up and keeping it nice and neat and out of the way before you start. And now you're using the start stop on your machine, um, yeah. which has it so at a constant speed. Uh, you also could be using a foot control. Yeah. Um, and when I've done the kind of work you're looking to do, I usually I'm not I'm not as confident a quilter as you are. Uh, so I'll yeah. usually use the foot control and just let it creep along nice and slow. Because uh, I'm not in a rush. I'm making something beautiful. I don't need to to you know get get home by five and uh, anything like that. It's uh, I'm making something beautiful. So I want to I want to yeah. take my time. It does make it a little easier when tracing around an object, unless you're unless you're skilled like Jennifer, uh, to uh, to be able to to take your time and slow down. And even you, you might decide you want to slow the speed of your machine down a little bit so it doesn't yeah. put in quite as many stitches. Uh, and this yeah. is custom quilting. This is making something that is that's one of a kind, special for someone. It's not. I'm I'm cranking out mass producing these. I got to make six quilts a week, or else uh, we're doing something really creative here. And I'm just making my way and tracing the tree. I'm gonna trace the ornament in the tree. And now you won't be able to see these stitches in the same way that you saw on my on the when i had like the purple thread on the white fabric but the idea here is that you really don't see the stitches that really what we're left with is the quilting oh, I, I love that i didn't i never thought of using uh like an invis uh, an invisible thread yeah. like this um because a lot of people i talked to a lot of people and they just so it's hard to pick what color of thread to put on the top of your quilt because sometimes it, you know, one thread looks great in this part of your quilt, but not in that. Sometimes it goes across even in a block and that's a lot of swapping your thread to put in just the right color of thread for each part of your quilt. Yeah. Uh, but where this lets you do a little bit of everything, uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Well, and I love that we're going from night sky here to the green of the tree to the yellow of the star. And I've got technically a white thread in there, but it's going to read as whatever color is behind it. Now, I'm now getting into the sky, and I'm going to turn up my speed a little bit. Yeah, to cover more ground. And give oh. some wind around these snowflakes, do a few hooks. And maybe I'll put in a few little stars. That's fun. I love this. I gotta say, I'm super jealous right now because I love pa uh, quilt panels. And uh, oh, man, I have not seen this panel yet. Now I gotta get one. Well, the panel we've got on all the Christmas fabric is 25% off. What? And, yep, 25% off, including this panel. So it was regular 16. Now the panel is on for 12. And oh, oh, oh. free shipping over 150. So, yeah. If you're yeah. looking for some cool Christmas stuff to do, this is an easy way to practice your free motion quilting. All right, so now I'm going down into where the presents are. You can see I'm just traveling down. And now I'm just gonna trace 
around the presence. And I'm not too worried if they're like not perfectly traced. I'm gonna actually give it a bow, like straight across the center. Come down around. Oh, this is fun. Because we're getting a design in the front of the quilt, but I'm not having to draw it myself. I'm literally just tracing what's already there. So that's pretty fun. And it's gonna look so good. Like that's, that those kind of details are really what helps quilting stand out. Um, you know, often if you're sending something out to a long armor, they, they're gonna do an edge to edge, uh, and, or they're gonna do an edge to edge, or they're gonna do an edge to edge. And occasionally yeah. they'll do some custom quilting, but nothing like you'll do on your own quilt, right? It's your quilt, you've loved it, you've worked this project, like you've really spent the time on it. Uh, even if it's just a panel, you're like if you're giving this to a friend, uh, you're thinking about that friend while you're, oh, I, I bet she'll really love uh, the the wind or I like, uh, she's gonna love how the presents are all decorated and individualized. Like this is, yeah. uh, this is so much fun. This is, this is what gets me excited about quilting. And now for the snow, I'm just gonna do some wavy lines going right across and I'll come down do some more wavy lines just to give it a little bit of texture. And what's cool is that once I get to the borders, I'll, I'll trace out those two so it doesn't really matter that this isn't going to meet all the way to the end. So I'm just being careful not to go over the Santa here. And I'm just doing the wavy lines just where the white is. And then I can trace out my Santa. I'm not breaking the thread at all. I'm just going from one thing to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And this is what, a little outline. And this is that great thread choice. Like you can't, you can go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing without having to stop and put in a new color and stop and put in a new color. Uh, you just oh, yeah, get to do whatever you want. Man, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to find some of this thread. I got to find this panel. I'm supposed, I thought I was supposed to be helping you talk about the cutie frame. And now I got a shopping list. <laughs> yeah. I know there's always it's a slippery slope, Jared. We're always uh, watching each other's stuff and going like, "Ooh, I need that." Honestly, but that's the fun of it, like being able to learn about new things and admire each other's work. Like, I love it. Let's give the beard like a little extra texture. I'm going to give him some waves in his beard. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, I'm like actually really in the zone here. I probably should be like paying more attention to you guys. Look, I'm just like swirling around his cuffs on his sleeve, like giving him like a furry like curl. Oh, I love it. Well, while Jennifer's quilting, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. And when she's gotten a little less in, in the zone, we'll go over some of the comments together and see if we can answer some of your questions. So Definitely. go ahead and start put, fill, filling that up with questions. Uh, if there's something you're... Uh, you're excited about or something you want us to show you that we haven't shown you yet uh we're happy to uh to to cover the material for you well and J jen's already covering the material <laughs> yeah um one thing i i'm noticing everyone always asks is what machines can be used on mm. the cutie frame like what size what brand um that's like a number one question that we that we get jared well, I, I know I get that question a lot. And the answer is mm, less satisfying than I think people would like. Uh, because whatever, like machine, machines are not, are not so specific. So if you can, are you already quilting on your machine is kind of the question I usually ask. Do you have a free motion foot? Uh, can you lower the feed dogs? And then is it like, a normal size machine? Is it an, a ginormous industrial machine? If it's just a, a regular machine, like what you have at home and you're already quilting on it, you can probably use it on the cutie frame. Um, and uh, so I, I, I like uh, machines that have about a nine inch throat, uh, not because I, I'm, I'm endorsed by brands to say that, but because I don't think you're gonna have a lot of fun if you use a machine that's only got like a six inch throat. Not that it won't work, just it's not as much fun uh, because 
Um, like on this machine, the needle, the, the measurement is from the needle to the back of the machine. That's what the nine inches is. But the actual foot that is here, this foot takes up eh, half inch, three quarters of an inch. Uh, the rail takes up some space. The fabric will take up a little space. So you don't quilt to nine inches. You're probably starting at like seven ish. And if you're yeah. doing a big project, that, that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of fabric over time uh, or a lot of space over time as your quilt grows. So it's it's more a matter of what machine do you have and it'll work. And I've got uh, my machine does not. Go ahead, Jen. No, I was going to say, I've got about, you know, I've got a decent sized throat space here. You know, this I, I would say is almost 10 inches of throat space. Um, on the 6650 and I'm hitting the frame. Um, I've got about two fingers here that accommodates the machine and about two fingers here. So that gives me about six, seven inches of workable free motion space. Yep. And you know, I've, sometimes you could put a little marker of chalk so you know not to go, you know, further than that. Um, because when I'm doing my little mm -hmm. or pin. swirling lines here, I wanna know, you know, don't end up hitting the edge i want to move that over so i can finish um you know on this side oh yeah but i don't know if you can tell here if we're looking at the overhead um like the outline on some of the stuff here i know we can we can kind of zoom in um if we zoom into the presence and a little bit here you may be able to see um, a bit of that stitching without seeing the real thread um especially kind of right in this area isn't it just so cool? It's the threads not overwhelming. It's yeah. just enough. And yeah, isn't that kind of cool to be able to trace this stuff out and uh, it, have it not be like a huge stamp. Of and texture. Yeah. You can see there, I kind of outlined the bows and it's just, and I outlined the presence and we're kind of coming down. Um, yeah. So um, I'm going to, Keep going here. Let's um, go through, oh, well, the price. So um, normally $16.49 is what the cutie frame retails for. Um, when the Grace Company has a special, we can put it on for um, $11.50. Like I think it's $11.49 normally if it was to go on sale. Um, but we've got it today for $9.99.99. So just under 1000 bucks. And um, yep. the Black Friday special uh, from Homemade is that you take another 10% off of any machines, irons, or the cutie frame uh, today. So if you're ordering it today, you can take another 10% off. So that's taking almost 100 bucks off e again. And Jared surprised us with a gift for you guys. Yep, the Gracie Laser and the Cutie Channel Lux. Um, together, they're worth about 150 ish dollars. I'd, I'd, I'd have to look at them, look at the numbers, but uh, and they are free, free when you purchase the QD tabletop. Uh, so uh, go ahead and get, uh, get yours now. Um, a lovely, a lovely uh, way to get started. Uh, could be top century. People, people get when they get their key frame is usually the Gracie Laser and QD Channel Lock. So we're happy to be able to include this uh, for our. Uh, uh, for Jennifer at uh, Homemade. Oh, this is so generous of you. So if you're ordering today, you're taking 10% off the $9.99 uh, price point, and uh, plus you're getting the free channel locks and a free laser. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for letting us do that. Um, we've got a little bit of time left. So Jared, let's go through a couple of questions. Um, first, what's the number one question you always get asked about the cutie frame? Um, the, the number one question I usually get is already what, what, what machines work with it? Um, yeah. and then the second question is what does it really fit on a table? Like what, what size of the table does it fit on? Um, yeah. and so I have my, I've got mine on a lifetime, uh, four foot by two foot table. Uh, and that's just because I don't leave it set up all the time. I take it, I take the frame down and I take the table down and I don't have anything sitting around. Yeah. Um, although it fits on a lot of dining room tables some big coffee tables and it doesn't have to like if, if your table is just a little small if it's like a 45 inch table it'll still work uh, the, the 
the way the machine doesn't go off the side of the frame and so it doesn't fall over. Um, and uh, again, the table doesn't even have to be that wide. So it, it just works really nicely on almost all the tables I've encountered, uh, even like banquet tables and dining tables and cutting tables and all yeah. kinds of tables. I've got it on my high countertop. So what I've got here is like um, 36 inch by now it goes longer but you only need four feet but exactly yeah. 30 it measures 36 inches here it, it, and it's perfect um i just use an inexpensive ikea table downstairs in the shop um and it fits exactly on it and it's we run it all the time people come into the shop and try it yep. um if you're local near kingston ontario you can come on in and give the cutie frame a try uh, but you're gonna want to order it uh and if you are local and then you can come on in and we'll give you a little lesson on how to get things set up. Um, but I know you're going to love it. It's really easy to use. Um, the main thing uh, being that you secure your quilt and you just move it along as you go. So I'm almost done this section here. For anyone that's just tuning in, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm free motioning this panel on the cutie frame. And the cutie frame is made by the Grace Company. And Jared is here with us uh, live uh, for our special. And he's coming to us from Red Deer, Alberta. So thank you so much for being mm -hmm. here. And we're talking about how we can use our regular home sewing machine in this new way. You're, I'm using the Janome 6650 and I've just turned it on its side and I've put it up on the frame. So if I were to take this off, you'd be able to see exactly how the machine fits on the frame. So I'll take off my nice panel here because I'm gonna I'm ready to kind of move it over anyway, um, just in case people are tuning in late and you can get a look at how easy it comes off. You've got these clamps that come with the machine. Uh, and so it you, you can put virtually any domestic sewing machine that has a you know, a decent enough throat space on the frame. You just want to make sure that, there we go. Um, lots of people have two machines or their old machine. We hear people, you know, I got a new machine. Maybe you're getting a new machine for Christmas. And then your old machine can be what you leave up on the cutie frame. And so you're not yeah. having to take it on and off. But the taking it on and off is actually not that big a deal. So I'm going to show you. I took the quilt off. You slide off the end so that you can take this bar off and you can see how nice and loose and smooth the track is um, and I'm just going to come around and get it from the others well I can do it from here um, and then you can just lift your machine right off so you can see I'm using the Janome 6650 still plugged in here I'm just gonna turn it off um, and so lots of people recognize this machine. We've had it on the shopping channel. Um, mm -hmm. I have it in the shop. This is a great everyday machine. It's got decent throat space, great price point. Uh, it's another 10% off today. So retails for this machine, 1649. So you'll take another 10% off today. Um, wow. but it's a great machine to go on the cutie frame, but whatever machine you have at home, as long as you can free motion quilt on it, you can use it on the frame. The more throat space you have, the more room you'll have to move, um, mm -hmm. which is, you know, ideal. But as long as you can free motion, you can use whatever machine on this frame. Right, Jared? That's right. Um, and of course, like if you were really nervous or worried about it, we can give you the the, the dimensions of the platform that uh, the machine sits on to make sure your machine isn't too big. Although... Your machine doesn't have to sit all on the on the tray. Uh, you can have uh, a lot of machines, particularly like great big machines, uh, they'll hang off the front or the back a little bit, um, and it can even hang off the sides a little bit as long as most of the most yeah. of the machines is able to sit on the tray. The weight is evenly distributed. There are um, two clamps that um, stick in here to secure your machine. Um, I just took, but the clamps come off and because the machine is so heavy and everything is so, so stable, sometimes I use it with the clamps. Sometimes I don't, I gotta be totally honest. I'm taking it like up and down all the time. So hopefully that actually just tells you how secure your machine is on here that I'm not even using the full safety clamps. I probably should be. Um, I've also had the big Janome M7 
uh, or the new M8 with the stitch regulator on this machine and using the stitch regulator, brilliant, because you really are turning that machine and you've got 13 inches of throat space there uh, when oh, yeah. you're using the stitch regulator. Um, Grace Company also sells a stitch regulator and yep. you can put it on the front of your machine. So if your machine is one like this, that there's no stitch regulator option, um, just send us an email at info at homemade.ca and we can tell you about the stitch regulator. Uh, it's also about a thousand bucks. And yep. um, again, extra 10% off today, but just send us an email and we can get you hooked up if you would like the stitch regulator for this as well. Because what it does is it makes sure that your stitches are all super even and no matter how what speed like if you're whipping around like this uh that you don't get a big long uh stitch and it allows you to not have to use the foot pedal and you've got a little stop and start control and it'll just um hook right onto your your clamps here yeah you know jared one of a the other of things that i love that you include in the box is an extension cord for the foot pedal that was smart yeah uh, so that's what I've got. I've got my yeah. foot pedal for my yeah. uh, my machine, and it's it's actually a pretty decent foot foot pedal. And then I've got this long I don't know it's probably four foot long yep. uh, extension cord, and it's got one plug that the foot pedal plugs into, yep. and one part the plug uh, one part the plugs into the machine. So it uh, it lets you quilt from standing a little more. Um, the lovely people who made your machine from uh, in real, they were smart. They went, hey, they're going to use this machine in exactly this way. They're going to sit down at a table, and it's going to sit this direction, and we're going to make the cord just <laughs> long just enough. Long enough. <laughs> and Fair. then we go ahead and do something silly, like turn it sideways and put it on a frame. And a lot of people want to quilt stand up. And so it comes with, yeah. I believe there's five different cables, uh, extension cables uh, for a variety of machines. Not every single machine gets one, but a lot of machines do. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of a nice to have. Uh, it's not not required, but if you have one, why not use it? Yeah, the Janome ones fit. The only one I, I knew um, in the shop that didn't fit was, I think it was a FAF. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple models, but for the most part, it'll extend uh, your foot pedal and that way you can bring it right around the front. And I'm standing to use it here because I have this counter, but you know, whatever height you're at, if you want to sit at a chair and do this because you don't want to be standing for the hours it's going to take, mm -hmm to quilt something you know pretty substantial then you just can put it on a regular table you have you know the ability to you know um make this a little bit higher or a little bit lower um and yeah just sit and comfortably quilt you could bring a stool you don't have to be standing to do it which is which is really really great um Jared, any final little words of wisdom when it comes to the cutie here mm -hmm. Uh, the big thing is don't be scared. Like it's, it's, it's a tool, but you're using your machine. So it's not, it's like add, adding a, a quilting table or an extension table to your machine. It's just a new tool for your machine. So you don't have to worry. Uh, and the less you worry about it, the, the more you're going to just have fun. Uh, quilting fun have, is definitely, and I, I, I know I talked to, I end up talking to a lot of business owners. So Quilting is part of their business, but the quilters I talk to are just doing it for fun. They're not charging people for their quilting. They're not, they're just making beautiful things for their friends and their family. Uh, and that, that sounds like something that should be fun. So just relax, uh, try, uh, to try different things, have a, have a piece of fabric like Jen has, where you can just kind of play and doodle and see what you like. And, uh, uh the other option get some panels and quilt up some panels uh and those are so easy and so fun uh and you don't have to stress about uh that quilting you know often we get really worked up about uh things especially as we head towards ho the holiday season uh but uh we should have a good time in life and quilting is a lovely hobby and we should have a good time at it and we do want to um not worry too much about it being totally perfect. I know people, especially if they're giving it as a gift, 
They want it to be to be perfect. So until you get your C legs with your cutie, do what I'm doing here, which is just take a, a quilt sandwich. So I've got scrap fabric on the back, some quilt mm -hmm. matting, and you'll notice, Jared, and this is a tip if you're ever wanting to practice on a quilt sandwich, uh, and you don't want to have to keep sandwiching it over and over. We do this on the long arm all the time when we're practicing. Is can you see what I've done here? I've got this fabric here that's already filled with fab with with practice, and then I'm just oh. putting another piece over top. So I'm not using a new quilt sandwich every time. I'm just using a new piece of top fabric because this backing and this batting is still good. You can go through this like tons of layers. These machines are meant to do tons of layers. So that's just a little tip. When you get this home and you're wanting to practice, you're not going to have to practice on, you know, 20 quilt sandwiches. You can use the one and just throw some more scraps over top of it and, you know, practice your little heart out. I wish I had, I appreciate the tip, but I wish I'd had that tip eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> Well, what a what a way to save you know save some money and and still get the practice in because uh, yeah. often I, uh, when I got started it was always new quilt sandwich quilt it up new quilt sandwich quilt it up um, so what a what a yeah, fun tip you can, you uh, can see I've we've quilted on this one you can see I've got you know people's name there's Linda's name um, all in <laughs> here because we we practice on this one all the time. And, and then just bring a new, like I had the panel, if you were watching earlier, that Christmas panel. Um, so if you're just tuning in, I'm just putting this one back on and you can see it all clips to the frame to keep it nice and neat and uh, secure while you're, while you're quilting. And it couldn't be easier really to load and unload. You can see if you needed to move your uh, quilt over, put this one on backwards, <laughs> but you can see, just take it off and put it back on. Um, if, if you needed to, um, uh, move your quilt over because you were finished with a section, how quickly you can do that. Um, because I've, I've loaded, I've had this one on when we started, I unloaded it to put the panel on, did the whole panel, and now I've loaded this one back up and we've been talking for 54 minutes. So that's, you know, it's not hard to load and unload. And then when you're ready to quilt, you're just in free motion mode and you are kind of just off to the races. Make sure you've lowered your feed dogs and you just make your way around the quilt and you can just be doing designs. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. So. Jared, I appreciate you being here and especially for bringing everybody the free channel locks and the free mm -hmm. laser. That was honestly very generous of you. I really appreciate you doing that for everybody. That's amazing. Um, so if you're ordering today, uh, we've got the frame, the cutie frame on for $9.99 and you can take another 10% off um, because it's 10% off and for Black Friday, any machines, irons or frames. So it's another 10% off the $9.99 plus Jared is throwing in the free laser and the free lasers and the free channel locks. Thank yep. you for that. Jared, yeah, thank well, you so much get, for being thank, here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's been a blast. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully uh, a lot of your customers will be doing the, the free channel locks and free Gracie laser and they'll get to try yeah. the cutie frame. It's going to be our New Year's resolution to finish more of our own quilts in 2024. Yes, yes, definitely. Amen. Yeah, we like that. We like we like finishing what we've started, not just sitting around with a bunch of quilt tops. This is going to help you help you get it done. Jared, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks so much, Jen. All right. Um, okay, you guys, the crafting is going to continue. We'll see you back here at the top of the hour. Bye, everybody.